Math 171, Module 1, Functional Notation and End Behavior. For this question, we are given a graph, and we are asked to find a list of the following things. Let's begin with F2. If you're asked for F2, what the problem is asking you to do is let x equal to 2, and then find y. So let's find the position on the graph where x is equal to 2. That will be here. And let's place a star on the graph at that point. Now we read the y value. The y value here is directly on the axis, and that's 0. So we can say f at 2 is 0. Let's try it again for f at negative 1. We'll let x equal negative 1. That will be in this position. Let's go up to where the graph is and place a star, and then try to figure out the y value by drawing a dotted line to the right to the axis. We can see that the y value is halfway between 1 and 2. Not exactly, but just about halfway. So we'll say that the value of f negative 1 is 1 and a half, or 1.5. Now, for situations like f0, we can see where x equals 0, that's this point on the axis, we have an open circle and a closed circle at 0. However, if you have to make a choice, choose the closed circle. So we would not say that the value is 2, since that's open. We'll say the value is negative 1. When x equals 0, the y equals negative 1. Here's another variation you might see. You might be asked, when fx equals 0, to find x. What we need to do is now let y equal 0. When they say fx equals 0, that's a fancy way of saying y equals 0. And draw a dotted line where y equals 0. Now we'll place a star where that line crosses through the graph. Here, and this other star on the right that we already have. Now, we'll give the x values as our answers. The first star occurs at x equals negative 2. And the second star occurs where x equals positive 2. So we'll say x equals negative 2 and positive 2. And that will be our answer. Here's another example. Now, we'll let y equal negative 2 and draw a dotted line through negative 2. Let's look at where that dotted line crosses the graph. It will be at this star in the lower left that I've drawn. Now, to find the x value, draw a dotted line upward to the x-axis. That gives us negative 3. So we can say, when y equals negative 2, after drawing the horizontal line, we can see that the x at that place is negative 3. Now to describe the end behavior. Let's look at what's happening to the graph on the left side. So on the left side, we have our graph continuing to go down as represented by this down left arrow. This graph is going to continue to go down and to the left, and it will continue downward off to negative infinity. Now there's a certain way that they'll want you to write this in Math 171. To describe the end behavior to the left, we say x goes to negative infinity. This is just a symbolic way of saying to the left. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes down and continues down toward negative infinity. So we'll say y goes to negative infinity. Now to find the end behavior on the right side. In Math 171, the way that you'll want to write this as x goes to infinity. This is just a fancy way of saying going to the right. Let's look at what this arrow does. We have an arrow on the right side going upward and to the right. That arrow will continue upward off to positive infinity. 
because it will continue to go upward and never stop going up. So we can say that as x goes to infinity, y goes upward, which means y goes to positive infinity. You can also write fx in the place of y. That's OK also. It really just depends on preference, but it means the same thing. Note that it doesn't matter at all what happens in the middle when you're talking about in behavior. In behavior has only to do with the extreme left and the extreme right. The middle is not part of this question. So since we've described the left side and the right side, that's all we have to do to describe the end behavior.